Uh, she was in P6, P7. I don't recall how old she was, but she she was an athletic. She would run like 200 meters, 100 meters. So whenever she would run, she would faint. So I know was killing the runs like he always does, and then something just happened. He he either lost breath or failed to to. to okay, he collapsed. That's what I had. He collapsed and just fell fell from the stage. Go on to Yena Yena Gasina Chain Pulida and Tobachi or Kulekang and Nina Mabambulago. We didn't pay much attention on that. Like, normally, being Africans, we think it's normal, like someone to fall sick, to have those, um, the, how do they call them in English? Those wounds in the throat. So we'd just try out local, local what? Hubs. Name your Kajagenda J. Yongeda, Engelijana, your Mudu singer, Manuk fainting gum. Cutting a new when a Kwanga when a soma, the hotelian by professional Nagendo Kuli Ranga and Kowa. Privilege for a chinuma Nayanga. See, Namanity obey me to call a jaw tell Jibera Minjinu. Nanga may be in Kowa, no, Kola, no. As a child, I grew up in Katwe, you know, no, one of uh, the hardest slums to live in, in Kampala, you know. So uh, I grew up with uh, in a neighborhood which had a lot of violence, you know. And uh, yeah, my life was, uh, I would say, like an exam. Yeah, life wasn't easy growing up, but uh, it was a good experience because I managed to know a lot more in life and how to deal with life. Because the tougher it, it was, the more I had to, you know, to work hard and, you know, such that I, I bear good fruits, you know, <laughs> I understand. So uh, growing up, uh, as a as a child, like you know, when you know, most times you you go playing, you know, it, during my time, we were doing a lot of kickboxing, you know, <laughs> and like playing soccer, a lot of different things. So I remember, like most of the times when I used to participate, let's say in soccer, I used to faint, and every time I went back to normal, you know, I just my life just moved on like nothing had had, had, had happened. So, yeah, that's, that's how we used to be, like, every time you, you get a challenge and you overcome it, in that moment you don't follow up the road course, you just move on with life. So, what we you know? <laughs> I remember the pain I had was like I can't even explain it because you feel like you're carrying a mountain like there's something in, in your chest that you want to pull out and you can't you know I remember I used to get a fork and try like to push it in such that maybe it can scratch in my in my chest you know because the pain was too much you know but i i took long to understand that every time i took cold drinks you know the problem would come nali na kakola endo ze myezi nga mnana nga sikyasola kutambula nga bluwentu ka ku madala nkoa nga ne wetambula nkoa atenge kilonge kifuba kibera kinene nnyunyunyu nga nkola nnyunyu nga mbo ba chichechi ndiko Rajuna Kolomo, na wuli danga dalobula mo bugwao, 
Nina kubia mkwano gangini mga pisi mfa. Na jana akulache na nyamba. Kwa angaz, ya kuata na tuwala mduwa lilo. Au sama nya, nina teka kwa oxygen. Kuteka kwa oxygen nina ankolola. Nina tuwala mwodi ya wa tibi. Kwa angali mama nyiti nina tibi. Kati mkula hao nina lozo ba nina wena luana na wo. Nina kubowa na nuka e gumba. Wana mchifuwa. So nina lozo. Mwini mwe gumbe ili nuse, kubwa bulu mbibuwa wanga ufana mwe gumbe ili nuse Nga hatu ulida ngoba amezi chintuwe chila le chila kide wano techifa hao Ulida nga inabye we tise tuso na bisa wansi Ufidi nga nge tise mituwe winji So nengeza kukutambula, nenge nze ya soka nyo kwetu mikirizo gena mwe x-ray Bakeberoba dala dala nina mwe gumbe ili ya lilu nuse Uh, rheumatic fever, this is an infection that usually uh, experienced in early childhood, uh, in, in the early years. Uh, the, the, the germ, uh, or we call it a bacteria, can affect the throat of uh, a patient, causing sore throat. Uh, it usually presents with high-grade fever, and we also have uh, joint swelling, and sometimes we can have chest pain. Uh, and this, if it's not treated, subsequently uh, it, 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 it causes a little bit damage to uh, other parts of the body including the heart. Never done but tell and never came and never gone by a observable in a or in a valve problem. Emma Linkinga and the lady is slow to close or to open. We met a doctor and I explained to her, showed the medical forms from uh, the acquired done in Mulago Hospital and the lady, uh, the doctor there, read through and she told me, ah, this is very serious. Like, according to what I see, you need surgery in, in you know, in the, before uh, the end of, uh, I think it was August or somewhere, September. Yes, so quite a number of our patients who have rheumatic heart disease get their diagnosis late from a number of reasons. One, the symptoms that they go through uh, might mimic other disease conditions. For example, cough, might be mistaken for a chest infection uh, and, and early on in the disease actually they might not have any symptoms until they get uh, a problem and then they come to us but also where they go the, the, the places where they go at that first presentation determines how soon they can get diagnosed so if that person is not oriented or is not aware that rheumatic heart disease is common they might think of other things and therefore, by the time they reach us, it's a bit late. Kora no maru rem, doctor ya kan rem, cha mo na we ora mero la ya ko, ko no e ta na kan cha mi le speed, bu mara ti be le chue. Yo ko e ko ni ati ka nyo, yo ko e ko ni mo no, ka pe ngat ta ti cha ti cha ko a pien ko du du ti to ya ko, wo da la ko. Kutubu miana ya lao mato, nyorangu tetea. Jo pimu tu kabuka ni ana peke peho maru chaka kaka ote, ni mono malari ya kake. Waru wanga lifeline lira, tu menyo gete kori gina botu eta tu kabuka kori lasio, lajo ote menyo ote moko ni mono tu eta. Tere chaka mi ya tiku ni ota. The numbers are increasing. Uh, it could it it's it, 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 it's mild pronged. One increase in diagnosis because the level of awareness is going higher. We trained more people, so they are becoming more alert. So meaning that people are picked a bit early, and we also have community outreaches where we go and we screen people. So that makes it seem it's increasing, but it's because we are diagnosing them more. But of course the other thing is also the, the, the living conditions, the risk factors for rheumatic heart diseases, uh, congestion, crowding, uh, poor access to, uh, to care, because this disease, it's about your body responding to an infection that's not treated in time. It's in 2005, I had surgery that was in India 
where I attained an open heart surgery. And since then, health wise, I stabilized. Bevambo inatini no rade womutima, muri natia, nenda vada lokfa kusembe de. Ga puri langa and dava dala tewari su vikwanga mani, but mrade womutima teria kolachi, a wona. I lost hope because uh, normally we know that people with heart problems, you die, like the heart is the engine of the body. So if it's faulty, you know, you are in serious trouble. We kept discussing with our patient, our doctors. We would ask them, doctor, am I alone? Because by then I was still a kid and I didn't know much. So I kept asking my doctor, is there also other kids who are undergoing through what I'm going through? So in 2015, the patients, RHD patients, supported by the doctors and nurses at Uganda Heart Institute, came up with that idea of starting the support group. These patients who are in the RHD patient support group, they came to accept their fate, that yes, they have rheumatoid disease. But now, considering what they went through, they felt like no, nobody else should go through what they went through. So that's why they came up and we, uh, we created this patient support group. It's an innovation that actually uh, came through where patients came together, uh, together with the providers. They meet regularly, discuss some of these challenges and how we can offset them. For us, we see that as an opportunity because it helps us narrow the gap between the patients and the providers. And we've made a lot of mileage. Uh, for example, uh, they, 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 they help us actually bridge the knowledge gap in terms of explaining to the clients where we are busy doing other things, at least they come in and bridge that gap. I was doing more of clinical work, that is uh, waiting for patients who have come to hospital and are already diagnosed, uh, help educating them, help them to get treatment, but now I realized that was not enough. We needed to prevent it because the patients coming to hospital were many. So I said, no, we better stop patients before they come to hospital. And I couldn't do the work alone. So that's when I thought, can't I have these patients who have the disease go out and talk to fellow patients? Because I had also realized that when a patient hears from a fellow patient, they kind of take that information more serious because when us health workers talk to them, sometimes they say, but for you, Musa, you've read about this in the books. You don't know how even it feels to get the injection every month. You don't know how it pains. But when they hear it from fellow patients who are living the same experience, they take it more serious. Back then, we did not have knowledge about the situation that we were going through. You know, you just go take the medication, go back home. You know, but the support group is very useful. And, you know, actually it's very important to every RHD patient, patient you know, because uh, you get to know more about how to live with RHD, you know, and, you know, how you can survive still longer, you know. They, they explain to you the food you should eat, you know, and the medication, how to take it, you know. You also get to know more about what the disease is all about and how it happens, how it came to be, you know. Na yengi la support group okuwe langa nangi nkola awareness. Eri abantu society. Kubanga abantu banji abatamanyi obradewa rheumatic heart disease abadi yeyo wabwedu. Bantu batono nyo ababu manyo bubrade. Ngate bubela, wamutu wabwe wala. Tainza bufuna ku ale stage. Kubanga singanze wali wamutu atu nyonyo langa tuchari. Bato, eh? Tuali bada abamu, tetubufuna. Ne echo chenja gala ukubela anga tuchirani sa. Mugwanga adyo ne ukubela anga tewachari bubrade wa rheumatic heart disease. The main objective of this support group one was to create awareness about rheumatic heart disease, starting with the patients, and also the create awareness to, the, to their caregivers. Because as the support group, we believe that a patient and the caretaker 
they play a big role in management of the disease. Because when you look at a patient, he or she spends less time in hospital and the caretaker spends more time with the patient. That's why as a support group, we value these two when we come to management of rheumatic heart disease. When we have activities in the hospital, they help me with so many things. Now they even know how to take a patient's blood pressure. They know how to counsel a patient who is yet to go for surgery, to tell them what to expect. Like they've grown into this work, much as they are not health workers. We do have healthy talks. And in these healthy talks, it's where we organize patients in small groups. And during these meetings, we always invite the medical personnel, especially the nurses. And that is Sister Samara at Uganda Heart Institute. She has always been there to, to, to educate our fellow patients. Then in the satellite clinics, we engage those nurses who work on those RHD patients in their clinics. Um, we also do have peer-to-peer -peer support. This is where by the support group members meet and share their experiences they are going through, share advices, share the coping ways because we have patients who have been with rheumatic heart disease for more than 15 years and their experiences enable these other patients to adhere. Our main motive is to create adherence among these patients. Support group enyambi moving to Vinji. Echisokela dala support group nafuna family empia. Mu support group. Wembera mu support group beranga aliye waka. Ekuletero kuberanga oyine emirembe. Nga wotunira mu radde munno Gana ya ine chizibu e chikulachi, e chimuluma na wenga uinachi e chimu, chikule etelama no gamba, siri nze ka. We visit families, you know, and in, in this process, you know, the, the family get, gets to understand that, yeah, this is a serious situation and I think we need to take care of, you know, uh, your own people, you, you understand. So the family gets to know that and also, you know, they, they get to know that there is life after the surgery, you know, and there is also life, uh, like some people won't even go through the surgery, you know, but they can take some medication and stay strong. So the support group helps that way. Because back then, before the support group, we didn't have that. Maybe if they visited my family, it would have been a different story with them, you know. If you want to see, there is, the knowledge gap is closed. We want to see a patient who knows what is disturbing him or her? Who knows what to do? Who knows the conditions in which to live a good life or a healthy lifestyle? We want to see a knowledge gap among caretakers <coughs> closed. We want these caretakers to be informed because some of the health, some of the caretakers have been involved in herbal medications, they are given medicines from the hospital, but when they go home, they seek for herbal medications. <coughs> some of them engage in witchcraft, some of them engage in spiritual activities, like they believe that if I take my patient to church, she will be healed by praying. And we think that if, we bring, if this caretaker gets to know the whole information, it will enlighten him on how when taking care of this patient. We also want to see the, the gap, knowledge gap in the community being narrowed down because we believe that the community plays a big role where this patient comes from. It plays a big role in the well-being of the patient. Uh, the advice I would give to the particular like the, the, the the patient, it's self-love. She has to be with self-love. If you don't have that self-love, no one will love you. Because you, you yourself, you know your weakness. You know you can't do this. Like For instance, Ruth would force her. But there are times she would refuse and say, no, I'm not going to do it. Self-love and 
desire to live.